Let's go. Can we get some help here? How is he? He's lost a lot of blood. The bullet's lodged in his upper left arm. We've stabilized the wound, but we gotta get him to more stat. Come on, it. Is he gonna be okay? Oh, yeah. I mean, we can give him two milligrams of morphine. He's not gonna feel anything until after the surgery. Here we go. You got that, Bill? All right. One, two, three. Here we go. Yep. There we go. Okay. Oh, oh, go. Go. Oh, fast. 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 I don't think I can do this anymore, Adam. His weakness is my opportunity. So you know exactly what you have to do. He must be dead within 48 hours. Give me 10 milligrams of dyes, Pam. We're gonna take him into surgery right away. You mind telling me what you think you're doing? <sighs> fine. You're fine. I just need to see to Michelle. It's important. You know what else is important? Letting the fresh bullet wound in your arm heal. Oh, come fine. Okay. Oh, yeah? You yeah. sure? Yeah. Oh, hey, see that? That is not fine, okay? That is, I just got shot. Come on. Right, legs up. Let's go. Come here. You want to talk to Michelle? Here you go. I'll go get her, all right? You just stay here and relax. Yeah. Right. Also, you know, don't let this happen again. I'm not happy with this whole shooting thing. I'm oh, sorry, Dad. You guys are still from me, Yeah. I'll be right back. How is he? Uh, he's pretty good. You know, he's stubborn, but he's he's pretty good. He really wants to see you guys, but he's got to take it easy. Have you convinced him of that? Look, if he strains himself, that wound could open up. Maybe get infected. I'll take care of him. Thanks. Corporal? Hey. Hey. If you needed a vacation, you could have just said something. Yeah, this is my first choice. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but when they were bringing me in, I read someone planning a murder. Well, Toby, you were barely conscious and heavily sedated. I know what I read. I don't know where it came from. The ER was crowded. That's not a lot to go on. I saw someone passing a photo, and he said that the guy in the photo had to be dead within 48 hours. Okay. Um, let's try to work up a facial composite and see if we can track this guy down. It's not necessary. The guy's name is Gerard Perot. He's France's Minister of Justice. So you're saying someone in this hospital is going to try to kill a major French politician? I trust what I read, guys. Okay. Let me talk to us. I'll see if I can get the ER security tapes and the log of everyone who's here. Okay. Maybe we get a hit. Let's do this. Look, Toby, I know how hard this is even for an experienced officer to shoot someone. You know, the best thing for me to do is keep my mind off it, right? Okay. Let's see what we can do. Let's dig into this. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? Are we getting close? You're good at what you do. It's him. Run out wide, both criminal databases here and in Europe. This might be a problem that followed parole from France. Is there anything from the security cameras at the hospital? I'm still running it and the nurses' logs to see if anyone has a criminal record or any connection to parole, but nothing yet. I requested a meeting with the French contingent. I wish I had something more solid going, but... Oh, what's this? Well, that's the SIU shooting team. Michelle's already done her interview. You just need to give a statement. No, you just have to go through the story in your own words. It'll be fine. Consultant Logan? Hey. You ready to speak with us? Yeah. Up to you. How's he holding up? He says he's fine. That's not what I asked. You understand that we've already talked to your partner, Sergeant McCluskey? Yeah. Yeah, she told me. She said you acted with exceptional bravery. This meeting is largely a formality. I did what I had to do. Um, you're still gonna have to go through the events of what happened the other night. Well, we, uh, we arrived at the scene of the shooting at, uh, about 7.30 p.m. We heard a lot of gunfire. And, uh, uh, we went in the building. Okay. Go on. We went up to the second floor. And, uh... Suspect appeared from the third floor. 
truest weapon fired hit me in the arm. Then what happened? My partner came to me, asked me how I was. I said I was fine. And the suspect had disappeared, so she went after him. And you followed? So I, I went up to the third floor, and there on the ground was a gun. I picked it up, went down the south corridor, turned the corner. Drop it! Turns around with his gun pointing at me, and I fired. So even with limited firearm training, you managed to hit your target under that kind of pressure? I fired, and he went down. That's all I know. Your intention was to disable him. Are you asking if I tried to kill him? I... Hmm. Guess that about wraps it up, Consultant Logan. Uh, your commander will inform you of our findings. Okay. Hey. Hey. So we think Dev found a match for the man who ordered the hit. Yeah, it's a guy. His name's Julian Couvert. He's a French national, but he's been on the run for the last three years. He's wanted for operating a murder for hire ring. Yeah, French police believe that he's still running the operation from abroad. All right, so he could be here in town. That's what we need to find out. We have to assume his organization was hired to make it happen. Well, uh, in my read, it looked like he might have subcontracted out the work to someone in the ER, like uh, a local hitman. My thoughts exactly. So, meet Dennis Falk. He popped out as the only one in the ER that had a criminal record and what a record it is. Narcotics, convictions, assault, attempted murder. So it's a guy like Hubert doing hiring a guy like Falk? Wouldn't you think he'd look for a specialist? He's our best bet so far. I'll text you his last known address. Meanwhile, I'll dig a little deeper on the rest of the people in the ER. Okay. If it's ours, I don't need to know. Alvin Klein, IIB. This is my deputy minister, Daniel Belanger, and uh, you've met Damien, uh, police national lieutenant and my head of security. How can uh, we help you, Mr. Klein? Uh, sir, we've received information that suggests your life might be in danger. <laughs> my life has been in danger ever since I accepted this position. What exactly have you heard? Unfortunately, the picture isn't clear at the moment, but do you know a man named Julian Couvert? Of course I do. A dangerous man, but a man on the run. He may be looking for revenge or a return to the French underworld. There is no reason Couvert would make this kind of play. And even if he tried, we have set up ample protection. Still, he may not be acting alone, and he might have been planning this for a while. I'd like to attach some of my people to your security team. We are happy to accept your help, Mr. Klein. Mademoiselle Bélanger. Bonsoir. But you must understand they will be under the direction of our staff. For security reasons, Monsieur Perrault has kept his itinerary top secret. We could help with the planning of Mr. Perrault's movements within the city. Daniel is right. The secrecy of our activities outside of the conference is our best protection. If you would still like to offer your help, we would be more than happy to accept under our terms. I'll have my office contact your people. Thank you. Merci. Bon, alors d'accord, on se rejoint là-bas tout de suite. Hein? Hi, this is Michelle. Leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Michelle. I don't know what more I can say. I know that the deal with Gaines was a bad idea. I, I was doing it for us. But now that may not be in us. I want you to know he's not an investor anymore, okay? I gave him his money back. The club will be whatever it's gonna be. I know, I know I don't have the right to ask for another chance, but I'm doing it anyway. You gonna take that? No. When they were taking me into the ER, I couldn't control my reads. I read you thinking about Adam. Is it true? Are you guys finished? I don't know. Some people just aren't meant to be together.
Falk? Got a gun in the car, Michelle. And there's, uh, it's this. It's like you got some explaining to do. I'm not really up on the price of cocaine these days, Dennis, but for you, it's looking like it's gonna cost about seven years. I don't know how they got there, and they're not mine. You know what? Let's start over, okay? We're not interested in the drugs. What we're interested in is who hired you to kill Gerard Perrault. Who the hell is that? Nobody hired me to kill anybody. So you're not connected to a French national named Julien Couvert? Look, I don't know what's going on here, but I don't even know any French people. I could have set me up for killing somebody. I'm not a hitter. I'm not a hitter. So what were you doing yesterday at the St. Luke's Hospital? I was dropping my boy Donny off. He broke his wrist in the car door. Buddy Donnie, is he a hitman? Hey man, what Donnie does is Donnie's business. No, this is not the kind of cooperation that's gonna help you out here. Look, Donnie does street sales, but he hasn't done it in a while. He's got something on the go right now, but he won't tell me about it. All I know is that he's flush right now. Look, I'm giving you everything I got. Cut me a break, man. You give us Donnie's last name and an address, and then we can talk about your break, okay? Okay, so apparently Donnie Stark doesn't have a criminal record. That's why I didn't ID him in the hospital video. He's either new to the game, or he's smart enough that he hasn't been caught yet. The Ministry of Transport records show that he bought a $70,000 car in cash last week, as well as putting a down payment on a condo in cash. Sounds like professional hitman money to me. He also traveled to Mexico City last month. That's one of the places that Couvert was rumored to have been hiding. How are you doing with the people that were in the ER? As far as I can tell, everyone's clean. How about working it from the Justice Minister's end? Any enemies who could have ordered the hit? Perot has taken down half of the French underworld. He can't be frightened, and apparently he can't be bought. The most likely suspects are Le Vent de Mer, Marseille's most powerful gang. Their leader is a man named Daniel Spinelli. The nightclubs, drugs, prostitution, you name it. Perot took him and most of his lieutenants down on racketeering charges last fall. Their trials are coming up. Well, this would be a great time to take out the justice minister. That would discourage them from trying to convict these guys. In the meantime, let's try to find Donnie Stark and see if his newfound wealth is courtesy of a French connection. Toby, yeah. can I go over? Sure. The official report from the SIU hasn't come in yet, but they're concerned about how the shooting is affecting you. Okay. They want a clean bill of health from a psychologist. It's standard procedure for any officer who's gone through this. Can it wait? Because we're less than 12 hours away from this hit going down. Dr. Gray is a good person to talk to. She understands what you're going through. Oh, yeah? Who'd you kill? She's helped half the department. It's not open for discussion, Toby. She's expecting you. Toby, I understand that you spent a number of years as a paramedic. Yeah, seven years. Sorry, can I move this over here? Please, make yourself comfortable. Thanks. So, you're no stranger to seeing death? No, unfortunately not. However, I'm learning that it's very different when you're the one who caused it. There's no doubt. Mm-hmm. Toby, when you were a paramedic, would you, would you characterize yourself as an empathetic person? I mean, I understand what people are going through. So then it must have been particularly hard for someone like you to have taken a life. Yes. Do you want to tell me about the shooting? Do we have to do this? It will help. I promise. Please. The guy who shot me in the arm was about to shoot my partner. So I yelled for him to drop his weapon. I guess I just expected that he would drop his weapon. But he didn't? He turned. He was about to point his weapon at me, so I shot him. And how did you feel in that moment? You find yourself reliving it, don't you? 
It's common. Most people that have post-traumatic stress disorder, they do. I'm not like most people here, Doctor. I'm inside the guy's head, and I can see myself shooting him. Are most people like that? I think that when you relive a traumatic event this strongly, it's important to distance yourself. I have seen things that no one will ever see. On the job. Before the job, my whole life. And I thought that this job would make everything that I've seen make sense. But I, I just, I look at what I've been doing running around, playing cop with no gun. <laughs> Being a hero, like, and now I shoot someone, I kill somebody, and, and uh, it all becomes very real. There are other therapies that might be of help, some medications. Okay, look, the drugs aren't gonna work. And I, you've got a job, and I appreciate you doing what you're doing here. But it's best if I just deal with this on my own. It's what I have to do. Toby, it's not what you have to do. You realize that if you were a tactical officer, I wouldn't let you back into service. But in your case, I don't think that relieving you of your duty is what you need. I think that you continuing to work with your unit, it might help normalize things for you. So I guess you'll just tell my boss that I'm okay and then get back to work. Toby, please just be honest with yourself and don't let this get so far away from you that you endanger yourself or your partner. And if you want to talk, my number is on the card. And you can reach me anytime. All right. Thank you. Michelle. Yeah? I think I might have turned up a location on Donnie Stark. Apparently, he likes to deal drugs out of a cafe in the east side. So how does he go from being a dealer to a hitman? You'll have to ask him yourself. I'll tell Toby you'll pick him up on the way. Great. Okay. There you go, there you go. You need anything else? I'll be fine. Later. Stay back. I'm gonna cut him off. Give me the gun. Move! No, no, come on. Stay the hell away from me. I'll do it. Go ahead. I'll do it! It's not going to change anything. Do it. Do it. Go ahead. Give it to me. Drop it! Drop your weapon now. On the ground. You know, this could have been a conversation, but you just amped it up to assaulting an officer. What the hell were you thinking? I was, I was trying to stop. You could have got yourself killed. Toby. Look, I don't know what I'm doing, okay? I can't do this. Tell us about Julian Couvre. You tell me. Never heard of him. We understand you're working for him. How am I going to work for a guy I never heard of? I don't think you understand the kind of trouble that you're in here, okay? Unlicensed weapon, assaulting an officer, not to mention the three kilos of coke that we found in your apartment and your car. Those weren't mine. Look, we can talk about this all day, but it still doesn't mean I know a guy that I don't know. We need to know your whereabouts for the last 24 hours. I was with my girl. No one else. She can tell you. She can also tell you what we were doing, if that's what you get off on. And my buddy came by and we went to go pick up something a guy owed me. Is that how you broke your hand? That's right. And then I went to the hospital. You know everything. Why are you asking me? Well, we also have reason to believe that you've been taking on contract killings recently. <laughs> what? Yo, how'd this go from dealing some dope to killing people? I've been moving up the supply chain. You want a deal? I could deal you some of the big boys I've been buying from. But I got nothing to do with killings. 
Hey. Well? Well, he says that he was with his girlfriend in Falk right up until they went to the hospital. I'll check if the girlfriend corroborates his story. And what's going on with Toby? I've left him several messages, but I, I really think the shooting affected him a lot more than he's letting on. Well, it's still fresh. Maybe you just need some space. In the meantime, we have less than eight hours before this assassination attempt. Check out Donnie's alibi and keep working this Marseille connection. There's got to be someone in town with a hookup. Yeah, it's going to heal nicely. There might be a bit of a scar, but that will do wonders for your street cred. Yeah, I'm not really that concerned with my street cred anymore. Seriously, are you okay? Yeah. Hey. Hey. My little angel of mercy taking good care of me? She is. She's the best. Are you kidding me? Very nice. Take that. care. I will. Kissing in front of me. I was a little pet. Come on. You all patched up? Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're ready to head back to the office? I don't know if I can do it anymore. I thought I could handle it, man. Finding out that I'm not like them. Toby, what are you talking about? When I shot this guy, I was inside his head. I could see myself shooting him. It's like I'm seeing a murder that I committed through the victim's eyes. I felt his pain, his fear. You did what you had to do. Today, the guy had a gun on me. And I kept walking towards him like it was nothing. I told him, go ahead. That's not good. Have you talked to Michelle about this? Don't, don't they give you a police shrink for this sort of situation? I only told you. Well, I'm flattered, Toby, but you should talk to somebody over there. Look, I'm gonna figure this out. I always do. I finally got in touch with a cop from the police nationale who's an expert on Couvert. He gave me the name of one of his known associates from a few years back, a Nicholas D'Angelo. Couvert was even married to this guy's sister for a while. Keeping it in the family. D'Angelo helped Couvert move some of his money offshore. He moved to Canada in 06. And get this, he had connections to Spinelli and the Vondermeer crime family. Do we have an address for D'Angelo? Yeah, he runs an import-export business right in town. Okay, let's bring this guy in and sweat him. A guy like this has secrets. No matter how smart he is, there's a loose end somewhere and we need leverage. Time's running out, kids. Michelle, you good? Yeah, just a lot going on. you people. I'm an honest businessman. Well, we'd like to ask you about one of your old business associates, Julian Couvert. I met him in passing back in France. He was your brother-in-law. My sister divorced him. And after I found out what kind of activities he was involved in, I broke off all ties. Well, we have reason to believe that he's here in Canada now. We also think that it may have been you who brought him in. Any further conversations will be done through my lawyers. I'm afraid this interview is over. And I'm afraid not. Your ex-wife, Christine? has secured an international warrant for you for a failure to pay child support to the tune of $300,000. And since when does the IIB concern itself with foreign marital conflicts? Since we found out that your old friend Couvert is planning to murder someone within the next five hours. So if you know where he is or where to find him, now would be a good time to talk. My lawyers will have me out of here in an hour. Hey, your receptionist was not front, so... Well, my, I mean, my appointment hours are over for the day, but I, uh, I, I have some time. I'm glad you came back. Please, 
Have a seat. So, how are you feeling? I think you were right about me being empathetic. You know, I think it's why I'm good at what I do with the IIB. Ever since I was young, I, I've seen inside other people's heads. You have a sensitivity. It's like intuition. And it was tough when I was a kid, because maybe I wasn't the coolest kid, and I knew what they were thinking about me. It must be hard to feel that way. Yeah, it was. Something like the other night happens. I killed this guy. I was near him when he died. And I could see myself the way that he saw me. He's a killer. I'm trying to figure out if that's who I am or if that's who he thought I was. My whole life, I've been trying to separate that. Separate who I know I am from who people think I am. And then this happens. And I'm lost. We all feel that to a certain extent. I mean, clearly, you more than others. But ultimately, Toby, who and what you are is a choice. And you chose in that instance to save your partner's life. And you can choose to define yourself by killing one person or by saving another. And now your partnership with Sergeant McCleskey, it's important to you? Very important. She's the one who gave me this opportunity with the IIB. She's a friend. Well, then choose to see yourself as she would see you. You saved her life. You are a hero. And let that be the anchor. It could be the thing that, that pulls you through this pain that you're feeling. And don't cut that part of your life out. D'Angelo's right. Even if we could get extradition charges into play here, his lawyer will have him out on bail by the end of the day. That's why he's so cocky. I ran his phone and internet records. There's no connection to Colbert or even a hint of crime. That doesn't mean that he's clean. It just means that he's smart. So that's it. The minister won't let us in on his agenda. We can't set up a proper security perimeter. We don't know when or where this hit is going to happen. No, our only way in is D'Angelo, and he's not going to give us anything. That might not be entirely true. Hey. Hey, you okay? Yeah. Did you uh, just come back to clean out your desk? No, you're kidding. We've got, what, like a couple hours before we can stop this thing? We're a team. We can do it, right? All right, let's bring you up to speed. Welcome back. I thought we established I wasn't speaking to you anymore. Oh, that was before. Before what? Before we knew how you got Kuvara into the country. Can't know about the Marlin. Trust Caddy to screw it up. Caddy told us all about the Marlin and how you set it all up. Where are you getting this stuff? I think the time to him, nobody at the dock. Well, the Marlin, it's a bow. Your fingerprints are all over it along with Couvert's. Do you have any idea how much trouble you could be in for transporting a fugitive into the country? Not to mention how much worse it's going to get for you if he actually carries out the hit. What do you want? We want Couvert's location. I don't know that. But I thought we were past this. I'm telling the truth. I brought him into the country. I didn't want to, but he called it an old favor. When he got here, I didn't want to know anything he was involved in. I didn't want any part of it. When was the last time you saw him? I brought him to a safe house. I went back there the next day for a payment. He has other contacts, and the next day he was moving on. One of them must die. I don't care which one. You choose. You choose. So you have no idea who he hired to do the hit? I heard him talking on the phone to someone. I don't know who. I sent a team to the safe house where D'Angelo saw Covert. They said it was empty and it was wiped out. This guy's a ghost. 
D'Angelo saw Colbert on the phone saying that someone would die if Perot wasn't killed. Maybe he's got a hostage. All right, well, let's go back to the hospital and talk to everyone who's in the waiting room again. Okay, wait. I might be able to narrow this down, guys. This is a traffic cam image from across the street from the safe house. It looks like Colbert left with a boy. Well, we need to find out who that boy is. Our people who are shadowing the French security team just reported that Perot is on his way to St. Luke's. Is he ill? I read Colbert saying that Perot's weakness was his strength. Maybe he knew he was sick. Could mean that whoever Colbert is coercing to kill Perot is still at that hospital. Well, if his security was so tight, then how would Colbert have known where to make the hit? It could be a leak coming from his own operation. I'll get onto French intelligence and have them run phone and banking records for all the people that work for Perot. If someone made a deal, they might have left a trail. We'll check in from the hospital. Let's go. Hey, hey, we need some help. Uh, what can we do? Okay, so you guys admitted a patient, a French politician named Perot. He's not on the books. Sandy, this is very important. You guys, life's at risk. Toby, patient information is privileged. This patient's info is top secret. I only found out an hour ago. We believe that an assassination is going to be attempted at this hospital. Now, we can get a warrant, but every minute counts. Okay. Thank you. Pro has early onset Parkinson's. He came in for a deep brain stimulus operation. It's basically a pacemaker for the nervous system to stop the tremors. Dr. Kramer is a world specialist. Okay, so he comes here to get the operation. His enemies don't know his weakness. He dies on the operating table. Complications from surgery. Uh, does Dr. Kramer have any kids? Yeah, two girls. Uh, one's in college. We're looking for someone on the operating team who has a, a boy, maybe about 10 years old, brown hair. Oh, um, Dr. Jillian Sisley, the anesthesiologist. She has a young son, Jeff. I read Cuvier saying one shot. Maybe it's not a gunshot. It's a sedation. He's making Dr. Sisley overdose Perot. Accidental death by anesthesia can happen. It wouldn't be that hard to adjust the amount of medication. What's the operating room, Sandy? War number three starts in a few minutes. Okay, okay let's go. Uh, let's can Toby go alone, please? It's just, we don't want to arouse any more suspicion. You know what I mean? All right, I yeah, got it. go. Dr. Sisley, hey, how are you? Good. I hope your, your wound is healing. Looks like you've got a, an important operation here. I suppose so. It's not something I can really talk about. I'm sure you'll do the right thing. I try. Because it can't be wrong. So I would know what you say. I would know what you do. If you don't do as I say, your son will die. Um, you're right. This is going to heal really well. What did you find out? She, uh, just went into the OR. Hey, Oz? Yeah, excuse me. I need yes. you to give a note to Dr. Sisley, okay? You need me to take the note? It's gonna let her know that we're gonna save her son. She just has to stall the operation a bit. Okay? Make sure she reads that. Done. cuvier has got her wire, and she tries to say anything, stop the operation, he's gonna kill her son. Yeah, but if we don't, Justice Minister dies. We got this. Okay, uh, I'm the director of emergency services. I need to give this to Dr. Sisley. There is a sensitive surgery being performed. This isn't the time. Well, this is the patient's toxicology report, so the operation won't start until the doctor sees this. We can't take chances. It's a procedural thing. Mm -hmm. Oz, what's this about? Oh, uh, we've got the uh, patient's updated tox report. Oh, no, that's okay. I've already studied this. I have to get back. Uh, actually, this is um, some new information. We think this is pretty important. I just thought you should know. Thank you. So my theory is that the earrings they have on her are too small to be a cellular-based device, so they gotta be Wi-Fi and broadcasting over the hospital's internet gateway. Those are all the connections going to the router closest to the OR. Okay, there's hundreds of them. How are we gonna know which one? All devices use a discrete identifier like an ESN number or a MAC address. We just have to find an atypical signature. Okay, look, whatever that is, the hardware is unrecognized. That's got to be our signal. Now we just got to find out who's accessing that over the internet. Okay, got it. Look, IP is registered to a, a Chinese restaurant on Queen Street West. It's like five minutes from here. All right. Get SWAT to meet us there. Got it. You ready, Dr. Sisley? Maybe we can proceed. I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to need a few minutes. I have to change the canisters. Isoflurin was recommended, but I've just been advised that the patient has an irregular heartbeat. Oh, we're on a tight schedule, Doctor. Uh, proceed quickly. Of course. Mm. 
You okay? Let's do this. When we move, we move fast. Mm -hmm. Copy that. Let's go. Who told you about Perot's operation? You want to make a deal, n'est-ce pas? When? When? And where? St. Luke's. St. Luke's. Thursday. Six p.m. No, it's no deal. It's Perot's deputy minister. Let's get Dev on it. Turns out Mademoiselle Belanger was in line to take over from Perot should he not be able to continue. They found millions of euros in an offshore bank account registered in her name, and that was only the beginning of a lucrative relationship with the Marseille gang. All she had to do was sell out her boss and get him killed. Dr. Sisley got her son back. We took down a few high-level drug dealers, a criminal on Interpol's hit list. It's not a bad day. My thoughts exactly, which is why I'd like to take you out for an exquisite meal and even better wine. I'm gonna... Pass. I'm gonna go home, get some rest. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good to have you back, Toby. Thanks. On that note, I uh, I have to go as well. Something I have to take care of. Have fun. Well, they don't know what they're missing, but I guess it's just you and me. Kind of feels like we're dating. You left the window last broken. Babe, what's going on? I'm pregnant. told me it was partly that I was mad that you hadn't trusted me earlier, but mostly it, I just couldn't process it. I'm still trying to figure out how to process it. I'm sorry I shut you out, Toby. No, 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 don't, don't be sorry. And if, if you're up for it, I like a chance to try again. Yeah. I'm up for it. There's just one thing I need to do first. Anything. 
You were so scared that if you could read me, then our relationship would be doomed. Remember? I don't know if I used those words exactly. Exactly those words. Okay, I probably did. Well, I don't believe that. So two weeks ago, I went off my epilepsy meds. Yeah. I want you to try to read me. Right now? Look, if you can't, then it's safe. And if you can, we'll figure it out from there. Okay. Just a sec, all right? Okay, now. Do you have to do that to read? I don't have to do that, no. <laughs> trust me, trust me. I love you, I love you. We can do this. We can do this. I love you too. Call me crazy. Please, when I think baby, please. If you come back, you'll see the windows wide open for hearts that are long.